There are dozens of insulation products available on the market, from the most common ones like rock wool and fiberglass, to the less common materials like recycled denim, cork, and foam glass. Now, all of these materials can be made to work in one way or another, however, there are considerable limitations in how each of these insulation materials functions and performs, and not all insulations are necessarily suitable for certain climates due to their specific material properties. In this video, we're talking about how different climates affect your insulation choices, and how you can choose the right materials for your project so that you have a long-lasting and durable building. Let's get into it. One of the biggest factors that determines what insulation products we can use and how we can use them is condensation control. Warm, moisture-laden air easily passes through air and vapor permeable materials like fiberglass, rock wool, and cellulose. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does mean we need to be careful when we specify these materials in colder climates. For example, we would want to combine these insulation materials with exterior rigid insulation installed outboard at the right ratio to prevent condensation. Exterior insulation warms the condensing surface of the sheathing, keeping the cavity closer to interior temperatures and relative humidity conditions, and thus reducing the number of condensation hours. You can use spray foam on the inside of the cavity, but it has to be closed cell. Though nowadays we're steering away from spray foam. Now in warm climates, this isn't really an issue since condensation doesn't really occur on the backside of the sheathing, it occurs on the backside of the drywall since we tend to air condition these spaces. In more temperate climates like zones 3 and 4, while it may be a good idea to install some rigid insulation outboard to reduce the potential for condensation during those winter months, it's not 100% necessary, and we can slow the migration of air and vapor using other strategies. Most unfaced bat or blown-in insulations will work perfectly well in these climates. If you're working with a conditioned roof or attic assembly, then you do need some rigid insulation installed outboard for your condensation control. Now in cold climates, think zones 5 or higher, it's very necessary to install some rigid insulation outboard for condensation control as these are heating dominated climates with harsh winters. The colder the climate, the more exterior rigid insulation or air impermeable insulation you'll need for condensation control, especially when it comes to conditioned roof assemblies, since moisture tends to accumulate in the attic around the ridge. Now we have to be careful when we're specifying spray foam in isolation in these colder climates, especially in roof assemblies, not just for the off-gassing issues, but because spray foam has a higher likelihood of cracking due to expansion and contraction of the wood framing from increases and decreases in moisture content and thermal cycling. We've talked about this before in a previous video called Why Your Spray Foam Is Cracking. It may also be necessary to use a product that has a higher R value per inch to reduce the thickness of the exterior insulation buildup if this is a concern. Now, if you only want to use air permeable fibrous insulation in isolation within the cavity in one of these colder climates, we can do that, but we do need to use something like an airtight smart vapor retarder installed on the interior side. We have a video coming out about that in a few weeks, but we want the benefits of an airtight vapor variable membrane so that we don't trap moisture within the cavity. Airtight is the key here though, as air has the potential to transport moisture at rates that are orders of magnitude higher than vapor diffusion. We also need to be thinking about the other properties of our insulation products beyond just air and vapor permeability. Rigid insulation products like EPS and GPS foam, mineral wool, and wood fiber insulation are thermally stable and don't really experience a significant loss in R value over time or when exposed to cold temperatures. However, insulation products like XPS and polyiso tend to experience thermal drift resulting in a loss of effective R value in extremely cold climates, and while they boast higher R values than their counterparts, they may not be suitable for certain projects. Rigid foams are more prone to deterioration from insects like carpenter ants and termites, especially when they get wet, so they aren't always suitable in regions where these pests are common. The local climate and habitat has a direct impact on what pests will be challenging your building. If we're building in a warm climate like Florida or Texas, it can be beneficial to use exterior rigid foams like EPS, XPS, and polyiso as an exterior vapor retarder to slow inward vapor drive, while also providing a thermal break between the hot outdoor environment and the air-conditioned interior. You can also use exterior rigid foams behind reservoir claddings like brick and stucco to slow inwardly driven moisture. Vapor permeable insulations like rock wool can be used on the outside, but you need to throttle inwardly driven moisture with a WRB that has a perm rating in the 10 to 20 perm range. We don't want any interior vapor retarders or barriers in warm, humid climates, and so only unfaced bat or blown in insulation should be used within the cavity. We want moisture to be able to dry out to the interior. 
Sun exposure is another major consideration that we need to think about if we're installing exterior rigid insulation. During construction, if the insulation is to be left exposed for an extended period of time, UV light can damage certain unfaced insulation products like rigid foams. It's important to consider this as a factor since you'll need to clad the building soon after the rigid insulation has been installed. UV resistant products may be necessary, like mineral wool, if the insulation will be left exposed longer than 30 days. Wildfire zones also drive the insulation specifications of many projects. Think about it, you need to specify insulations that won't burn or melt. Exterior mineral wool is highly recommended for fire protection. It's basically a fire blanket around the entire building, as it's non-combustible and has a very high melting point. Interior rock wool or fiberglass is also highly recommended in the cavities, so that fire doesn't easily travel within the framing. Avoid foam products in these regions, as foam burns hot and smokes. How do you tell which ones melt and which ones burn? Thermoplastics like polystyrene melt, thermosets like polyiso and closed cell spray polyurethane foam burn. Guys, there's a lot of decisions that need to be made when it comes to selecting an insulation strategy beyond just the cost. The properties of the insulation products that we specify have to be suitable for our climate conditions, which also has an impact on how much insulation that we need and the location of the insulation within the assembly. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers. Thank you.